Hi, Hanny. Thank you for uploading your pictures. I'm sorry it took a, a, a little bit longer than usual. It's been an extremely, extremely busy period right now. Uh, this summer period is always very busy. Okay, um, let's jump in. Just as an overview of what I've seen, it's excellent. Doing really well. What camera are you using again? You're using a 5000... Uh, a 5100 Nikon 5100 okay so um, that's good it's a basic camera which makes it much more exciting because if you're doing well with a basic camera that all the students here really are then when you do eventually jump into a professional camera you're gonna you're gonna be on like cloud nine okay so let's have a look so um, this is focus fine the issue why is that not sharp you might be asking and focus you you're still in class two so you haven't gotten to class two which is now maybe you've listened to it by now which is about um which is about shutter speed which is going to help you understand that you can get a uh, blur from two things in an image it could be um that the picture is not sharp in focus or that it's not sharp because there was movement okay so i think here it could be that there was movement but anyway it's really a side point the point is that remember keep this word in your mind focus is distance okay just keep that clear in your mind and um that's gonna that's going to uh gonna help for a lot of situations as you go forward okay so obviously the fish is at a different distance to you from the fish food and therefore we have one in focus and the other in focus okay close face this is good so although it's funny because you think like what's there to learn about taking a picture of somebody's face it's quite interesting so um, first things first is guys the most important thing of taking a picture of somebody's face is point of entry when we're looking at somebody's face is their eyes now your eye will go downwards okay your eye now goes down to the mouth down to the nose down to the mouth and then comes back that's how your eye works when you look at a face you see the eyes first and then it then you uh then you then you move around it all happens in split seconds but anyway so the eyes because the movement's going down should not be center so look at the difference here it's quite it's really cool to see this right now your eyes are above center which is correct if i now was to crop this picture um with his eyes being in the middle, which is something like that. I think that's middle. Do you see how awkward that picture feels? It's clear, no? It's very clear that there's just not enough room. Why? Because we've got the same amount of room here as we do here. Like I said, because our eyes moving downwards. So how you got it here is much, much better. So kudos in getting that right. Excellent. That shows already that you have a sensitivity to the image, the tension, the directions, which is the probably the foundational stone of what photography is built on, is the sensitivities. Like you can learn. I've seen dozens of photographers, literally up to a dozen, ten photographers, um, who've who have um, got an excellent uh, an excellent um, understanding of photography. Uh, technically and they take very acceptable photography and they built fine businesses and they're doing great um, however when somebody has that sensitivity to the tensions in an image um, then they can then they can really fly they it can be, if, if they play the business game correctly as well obviously which is a big a big factor uh, but the photography can be dramatically better it can be dramatically better like objectively okay so now there's another little tension here that you didn't catch which is fine and it's very very slight in this picture but it's very very real now i'm just going to assume this is your husband if it's not, I'm sorry. Okay, so, um, or your dad, it could be. No idea. I'm going to say it's your husband. So, um, we've got now, when we look at somebody straight on, yeah, their face is split into two halves of their normal person, and each half should be symmetrical, should be exactly the same size. Okay, now, as somebody turns, if you notice now, on my face, we've got this side of my face, oh, let me get it quick, this side of my face, which is called long, and this side of my face, which is the short side, it only takes that much distance. Okay, I'm not going to get too involved into it uh, because it's really to do with lighting, and that's definitely not that's definitely not on the radar right now. Um, but if you look, your husband is slightly turning in that direction. The video is backwards for some crazy reason. But the way of my mouse, 
we're moving in that direction. You see this area, this side of his face is smaller than this side of his face. So that means our eye now is entering into our eye here, but there's also a tension moving to the left side. Also a tension moving to the left side. So really the fact that there's a little extra room over here than there is over here, that should be inversed. Okay? It's a very it's a it's a very real point. In this image is very slight, but you could it's tangible, so I thought I'd give it over to you. Uh, but that's the rule for tensions is trying to feel number one the face the rule of the face is that you go down okay number two your your eye will move according to which way the face is moving and to the degree that it moves your eye will move more okay Let's say that okay let's go forward okay on the third that looks like a third to me that's good and we also have a feeling of moving this way from this thing it's funny to think of it like this but what's the movement that comes from a flower pot but this is the reality is we have one second we have a a good triangle over here that the actual energy of this triangle is going in that direction so we so um, We've got a movement this way, which is exactly, I think, what we're trying to do for the next one, one second, which is here, which is to space. So this is kind of a pre precursor. The rule of thirds and the, and, the, and the into space are very much bound up with each other. And like you've done here, he's basically on the third. This pole is distracting. That could be very quickly removed in Lightroom. Uh, but we've got a nice movement. Again, like I said, you've got a good energy. You've got a good sensitivity to the energies. That's great. Um, hand in a pocket. This is more of a feminine, just as a side, but more of a feminine pose. So a guy could put his hand in his pocket better than actually on his hip. Okay. Um, and let's get on with your photo shoot. Okay. This is great. This really is great. One thing that we could do very quickly to see a dramatic improvement is to crop in. See, I'm, uh, I go against the rule that I taught for many, many years is that in the old days, this tree is a little distracting. Um, in the old days, I would always teach that you should always keep to the aspect ratio. You'll learn about this in the Lightroom class. This is the aspect ratio. It means the shape of the image. The, um, the, uh, the size of the image, that's a different thing. But I, I've always, I've always told people that they should keep the size, they should keep the shape of the image as it was the original shape so people can print it. But nowadays in 2018, where you can print a square picture just like you can print any other kind of picture, um, I don't think you need to worry about that so much anymore. So I don't as well. So, uh, in regards to cropping, if I was cropping this picture, I would be doing something like this. I would be cashing in on this lovely perspective and the uh, and this this triangle coming in the depth of the the triangle moving us into the back of the image. The the light on your on your husband is uh, is acceptable. Um, your it could be that it could be um, we could brighten his face a little bit in in Lightroom. But the the actual image is great, and I appreciate the you know that you you noticed this and that you you uh, incorporated it into the image. Excellent. Okay, uh, in close, this is fine. Um, there's a lot of rules here that you've adhered to that you don't know about yet. Um, that I'm happy about. I'm not going to even introduce them to you now. Just to let you know that you will be looking back at these pictures in a couple of weeks, thinking, "Oi, uh, okay." Thank God I'm in a different place now. Uh, but that said, we've got a nice, um, we've got a nice triangle here. Point of entry is his face. This line here protects us, keeps us around, so we don't bump into any edges. Uh, to put a slight vignette would probably help with an image like this, just to keep our eye around this line. Okay, good. This is good as well. Great, showing again your sensitivities to the to the energies of the image. That's great. Uh, it could be just as a side point. He could put his arm. He could he could uh, drape his arm over the over the bench over here. That would add a lot. It would also give us more movement in that direction. That in this case would be the best. That would add a lot to the image. Okay. Again, showing your sensitivities to the direction. That's great. This line bouncing off into the background is nice. Uh, in regards to our subject, um, we've got the the light on his face is messy. Again, these are just ideas I'm throwing out to you. That can't you shouldn't really be having these things in your mind right now. Uh, but just 
on the off chance that you remember it or whatever the light is considered messy with these shadowy areas which is because the sun is hitting him best to try and find a shady place um but again the pose is quite nice as well we've got a point of entry here a nice triangle moving into space all is good okay this is underexposed but again nice uh, attention to uh, to the space we could brighten him up in lightroom for sure uh, this is the least strong i think of all these pictures I think this probably the thing is that all the, the, if his arm was draped over the side here, this would be a great shot, an excellent shot. It's a, it is a good shot. It's just it would be such an improvement for him to have his arm up there. Um, so what? What should we take into? Let's let's take this one into line. Let's see if we can make this a little add something to it. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Um, so now, I I mean, the most important thing here is we're just going to brighten him. So let's, you know what I think I'm going to do? Because I am not. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I could show you something really helpful in Photoshop. One second, let's just brighten him a little bit. The clarity right now went much too high. That was from my previous edit that I did. Okay. Um, and I would, I mean, we could soften the background a little bit more. I'm not going to spend too much time here. If I now put my clarity down to zero and then just run it around here, you see, it just gives it that kind of dreamy feel. One thing I probably would do would be to de-emphasize this, which could be done with a, I could use a gradient, I suppose. That makes it more. No, I think we'll get rid of that. Makes it more, uh, more visible. Okay, so th that that would be a, that would be the basic direction that I'd be going in with a picture like this. Let's look at just to show you something super helpful because it's super easy and it's nice to know right now. Getting rid of this. Now we're going to do this in Photoshop. Okay, this is so easy. All we need to do is find this tool, which is called the Spot Healing Brush Tool. And in a case like this, I'm pretty sure it will work perfectly. There are times when it messes up, a lot of times when it messes up. But I think from my experience, that should, it's just gone. I mean, that's annoying. And we just click there and that's gone. Okay, so just to show you that tool, it's such a helpful tool to have. Um, in regards to editing images like darkening, lightening pictures in image in in light in Photoshop, although to do just uh, like a simple global lighten, which would mean something like this, just adding some, um, making the picture a little bit brighter. Yeah, that's quite straightforward. Um, but the fixes in Photoshop to basically edit an image in Photoshop is speed-wise is completely incomparable to Lightroom. Um, you can. But you can obviously go so much further in Photoshop. Um, but the speed, the the question is, we always have to make a a, a distinction between what what do we, you know, how much are we prepared, how much time that the time to, that you could put into post could be, you know, people can go crazy. So the goal is to know when to stop, basically. Anyway, look, in short, that was the way that I would have gotten rid of a poll like that. That was distracting for our attention. That was so. That was um, that was distracting our attention and this is now that's a dramatic improvement from this we just brighten up as well a drop but you see how that pole really does make a difference okay i would um if there was if this was the only place um then i would be having in mind shooting that picture that i would be taking this out in post anyway uh, you've done exceptionally well and um we're looking forward to seeing what you do for us next week okay all the best